Okay, real talk. Why has it been cool for like two weeks? And then the day that we are like, okay, we're ready to record more. It's suddenly summer again outside. I don't know. What is I, happening? I can smell my sweat, though. I'm <sighs> so glad that you all can't yep. smell over the internet. Or see, this is the special underwear edition. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> of Cinema Oh, my gosh. Um, it's, and... it's like, it's not even like... I want to be like, it's sweltering, but it's not, no, but it's, it's not like... actually sweltering, but it's been like so like crisp and yes. cool and autumn and not really humid, not humid. And today is just like, <sighs> <sighs> I can't breathe. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. I, to be fair, I just drank an entire pot of tea in like, that sounds like 10 minutes. Problem. It is a me problem. I have such a hard time. It either takes me five hours to drink a single pot of tea or mm-hmm. ten minutes. And there's no in between. <laughs> it's it's horrible. Let's be honest, it's not just tea, it's anything. It's anything. If you put yeah. any it's like, that's drink. why like anytime I have a drink, I like I have to give it to Eli and mm-hmm. be like, hold this or else I'm gonna drink it all. And then I drink all of it instead. That's no. not true. No, it's not. Because I forget that I have a drink and I stop drinking it. Oh my gosh. Yep, underwear episode it is. Yep, and the best part is, because this is audio only, you have no idea if we're being serious. <laughs> so do you I wanna... would say use your imagination, but no, <laughs> please don't. don't. <laughs> do you want to do you want to get into our subject for today? Um, what are we talking about today? We are talking about the 2021 Japanese film known as Asakusa Kid. Uh, it, it's, do, would you like me to describe it, or would you like to? Asakusa. 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 A, a, asakusa. I, I I would imagine. Is that like most Americans would probably say, say asakusa. asakusa. Yeah. yeah, but is it asakusa? As as far as I know. Okay. Please correct me in the comments below. We need to look at that website that has all the like the pitch. Yeah, accent. the pitch stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But would you like to describe this film, or should I? Um, it's basically the very beginning of. A renowned what, actor, director, writer, painter, comedian, comedian guy, e- everything. <laughs> yeah. uh, Takeshi Kitano. Yeah, I suppose what we would call a Renaissance man. Yeah, That's, you know, uh, he's done everything. Mm-hmm. His paintings are like they're pretty good. I love his paintings. Yeah. That's like one of my favorite things about Kitano. His, I, his I style. love his style yeah. and his paintings. I I just think they're so cool. But yeah, um, this this uh, movie has nothing to do with his paintings. <laughs> Unfortunately, because it's before uh, he started painting. Yeah, it's it's uh, pretty much set in the mid seventies, mm-hmm. almost exclusively. I did not realize while we were watching this, it's based on his memoir from nineteen eighty eight of the same name. It's also based on his song from nineteen eighty six. What was of the that? same name? Oh no, I didn't. <laughs> Kylie did more research than me. I mean, to be fair. <laughs> my source could be incorrect but i did wow. see that fake fake i fake mostly news. read stuff off i mean wikipedia because wikipedia is easy wow. there, there wasn't much on wikipedia about no. this surprisingly no i saw that too because here pro tip uh for anybody who's our age who grew up being told wikipedia is the devil or if they still teach you that in school i don't wi- know wikipedia is a great place to find sources uh, without having to put in as much effort. Wikipedia is like, I always think of it as like my sea source. Yeah. It's like the bones of yeah. anything that I'm writing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But, well, because it will, it's like an amalgamation. If you go down to the citations, it's an amalgam of a bunch of different information. So you can go to the Wikipedia article mm-hmm. and then go to the citations and then find which, the direct sources. Which usually the direct sources are available online. Mm-hmm. It's uh, okay. It's like it's like between twenty five percent to seventy five percent, depending on the article. Yeah. Anyway, but, so um, about this this movie. Well, I was also on Matcha JP mm-hmm. and Japan Times and a couple mm-hmm. other places. Okay. I mean, like IMDb, you know, because yeah. I like to read reviews after we watch things. Yeah, of course. Because it's so fascinating to see how I am so different from other how, people. How other people react. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm curious um, about that because I have, I don't know if I have a ton to say about this movie, but I definitely have a few opinions about it. Okay. Yeah, we'll see. So I'm, I'm curious. Um, but yeah, it's mostly set in the 70s and yeah. it is, it is based on Kitano's, um, memoir mm-hmm. autobiography yeah 
I, I guess probably that's either. You, yeah, either of those. Yeah. That he wrote in 1988. Right. So that was one of the things that I kept seeing hmm. that people were like really annoyed about, I guess. Or I, I like I couldn't quite understand the vibe, but like people okay. were just like commenting on the fact that they were like, the movie stops where his story begins, and I'm like, what are you talking about? This man has like like epics of his life yeah. like this is just one look at that and also if it's based on the thing that he wrote in 1988 right that's before it was a year before i think merry christmas mr lawrence came out in 89 and that was his first like no okay i'm sorry that was his second dramatic role and it was the one that nobody took him serious in mm-hmm. and i think his first the first film that he directed was in the mid 90s so it was like yeah, no, this is, like, solidly when he was only doing comedy, basically. Yeah. But, and and he had a video game, which, in the 80s, which, like, obviously it doesn't touch on that or that's anything. Like, but... That's what I mean, like, like Renaissance Man, 100%. Yeah, it's before he started painting, it's before he started directing, it's before he started doing drama. And So it's like, yeah, it's just about him as a comedian. I When you said 89, that mm-hmm. was like, I was like, oh, that doesn't sound right. It was 83. Oh, it was 83. Okay. Yeah. So, so not, by to, the time... not to be like, actually. No, no. I, just, I couldn't like, remember for no, some reason. No, it's, no, it's fine. I'm just like, just for viewers. He was, he had starred so he had already done that. Yeah. in some dramas, dramas yeah. before he wrote his memoir. But right. obviously that wasn't part of right. the film today. We, and again, this was another thing that people were talking about. Well, I haven't read his memoir, so mm-hmm. I don't know. But um people were saying that <laughs> this movie is very like run of the mill mm-hmm. biosocial or or um like biopic. biopic yeah i honestly that's kind of my gripe with it like it's i'm going to put this in air quotes boring kind of because there's nothing there's, new there's nothing or that really exciting. stands out yeah. about it other than the fact that it's about Kateshi Kitano uh, right or, right to Kateshi Kitano <laughs> But honestly, okay, okay, this is this is going to sound crazy. This is going to sound crazy, right? All right, hold on, let me brace myself. Okay, uh, that's actually... Wait, kinda... I'm not ready! <laughs> okay, sorry. That's actually kind of what I don't like about it. Okay. Uh, okay, so let me just, let me take you on a journey here. Okay. To artifac- ar- artificially myself? pad out this episode. <laughs> Wait, no. I'm not ready! <laughs> <laughs> so, I have not seen the film Bohemian Rhapsody, the, the one about Queen. Uh, with I cannot remember the guy's name who plays Freddie Mercury, but I was very aware prior to that film going into production how Sasha Baron Cohen was attached to it for like a decade to play Freddie Mercury, and he like they finally got it into like the early stages of production after being in production hell forever, and he what? Nope. Go. And he realized that the remaining members of Queen who are still alive were like, no, this movie is not about Freddie Mercury, it's about Queen. Because apparently, I again, I haven't seen the film. Spoilers for anybody who didn't doesn't know, Freddie Mercury is no longer on this earth. <laughs> it's been about 30 years. Um, but <laughs> That's like, it's like when uh, somebody we know found out that Randy Savage, Randy Savage had died <laughs> like 10 years earlier. It was like the saddest day of his I mean, life. He was legitimately he was like so upset. devastated that Randy Savage was actually dead and had been dead for <laughs> quite a while. <laughs> So not to make light of the no, death of of course of not. death, but of course I mean, not. death is inevitable. Everybody, no. okay. <laughs> so it, Sasha Baron Cohen pulled out of the project though because he was like, "This is supposed to be a movie about Freddie Mercury," and then Queen was like, "No, he dies halfway through the movie, and the movie is about Queen." Yeah. It's a, so he was it's like, about, "No, I'm not doing this. It's about Fetty. It's about Fetty." <laughs> uh, but so I had the problem with uh, a Saksa kid. That it's kind of the opposite. It's entirely about Kitano. Nobody ever talks about Beat Kiyoshi. I want to know his story. I want to know about both of them. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. They completely I, I, focused on him. They didn't even... They talked about how they met. Yes. They talked about how they came up as a manzai, which is a type of comedy duo. And then that's it. Like, that's basically the extent of Kiyoshi's character in this entire film. Oh, I think that's really fair. I... I um. I was like a little confused by your statement because mm-hmm. arguably this film is more about the relationship between Kitano and his mentor. His teacher. Both of their teacher. Y- yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I like I want like, that's, that's I was fair. like I want to argue, but I do agree with you. Like, like why? What 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 the Kiyoshi doing? Like yeah. no <laughs> literally I don't what, you... <laughs> what Kiyoshi Ding Dong was like. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's sorry. a different movie. <laughs> um, so, but no, that's my thing, though, is that, like, I fully understand that this is a movie about him and learning that it was based on the book that he wrote about his come up. It yeah, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And this is on me for never, like, really deeply looking into this. But I'm like, I want to know more about Kiyoshi. Like, yeah, I get that. He I was do. half of the duo. Yeah. If they hadn't come together, he Katana wouldn't have springboarded his career into all those other things. Mm-hmm. Well, because he was the one who, uh, what was the inception of the idea? He mm-hmm. catalyzed mm-hmm. them doing that. Yeah, Kiyoshi. Yeah. Yeah, because, because their mentor hated Manzai and was like, it's fake comedy. It's awful. It's not funny. And Kiyoshi came back and was like, hey, but this other kid that's working for you now, Kitano, is hilarious. And I think he and I would make a really good manzai duo. Mm -hmm. And if that hadn't happened, Kitano wouldn't be where he is. I mean, probably. Potentially, you you, you you say that. You don't know. Like, Um, I don't know. Which, that's actually springboards a little bit into something that I was thinking. Mm -hmm. That I, okay, his his mentor's name is uh, Senzaburo uh, Fukami, mm-hmm. and which I probably maybe said that wrong. I don't know, okay. but um, uh, I just want to say that everybody needs a Fukami in their life. Oh uh, yeah, everybody needs somebody who is that supportive. Mm-hmm. Like I know that the film, like it's probably dramatized. You know, I'm obviously sure. it's I'm a sure. film, but the fact that like the whole, I will say, like it got me to see somebody who's like too proud to bow to a yakuza mm-hmm. or something like that. Mm-hmm. Going around to all the other theaters, Mm -hmm. you know, to, like, bow to them and ask for them to help. Mm -hmm. Like, to see somebody who, like, puts on the airs... Of being a hard ass. Of being a hard ass and being, like, almost like a prude. Yeah, yeah. But then, like, when it comes to the nitty gritty... Yep. He, like, actually supported him. Yeah. And the fact that he supported him through his decline, Mm -hmm. that's, like... That's some serious show of character. Yeah, yeah, honestly, because obviously, like you, like you were saying, a lot of this movie really is based around the relationship between the two of them, mm-hmm. and like, I guess spoilers, spoil, spoil, spoilers. If you don't want it, it's it's a pretty good movie. Go watch it if you like Katano. If um, you like Katano, you'll like this movie, yeah. but you might be disappointed by the fact that it's only about. Like, the first the... 10 years-ish of his career. Yeah, it has nothing to do with him in movies whatsoever. Or his paintings. No. <laughs> so, so, but, uh, spoilers otherwise, um, the, like, parallel narrative, I guess, of the film is how it's, like, the end of an age in comedy and how, like, the theater that he's running is declining because, like, because TVs are way more commonplace than they've ever been, um... Because, I mean, TVs had been around for a while, but then the 64 Tokyo Olympics made it so that, like, TVs were way more commonplace. Mm. So we're talking about a decade after that. You mean Fukami, who yeah. owns the theater. Yeah, 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 yeah. And how he's, like, super duper against that, like, change in uh, platform, where he's like, no, the theater should be in-person on a stage. It shouldn't be impersonal on a TV All that kind of stuff. Which is where I say the prudishness comes from. Exactly. So the, like, the parallel narrative of the entire movie is that his brand is, like, or not his brand, his, like, style and what he came up in is dying out. And Kitano couldn't have necessarily continued to have a career in that. Like, so he was trained in that in stage production, like, stage comedy. But then he has to transition into, like, TV comedy to, in order to have a big career whereas at the same time that he's blowing him and uh kiyoshi are blowing up the theater is like going under essentially yeah so in that way it's like it's kind of a sad movie too yeah it's it's kind of it's fascinating it has a lot of emotions because like you can you can see it as sad especially because Mm -hmm. of kami Mm -hmm. um and then you can also see it as kind of inspirational Mm -hmm. because katano was born in 46 I think I think like right after World War II. Like, I think yeah. he was born in forty seven. Yeah, and this takes place in the mid seventies, so he's like nearing thirty, almost thirty. He's yeah, nearing like 30. late twenties. Late yeah, and I think it's like really uh, that's why I appreciate about it. It's, it's mm-hmm. inspiring because it's like somebody who's around our age and around mm-hmm. the age of our viewers, based off of YouTube analytics. Yeah, um, was just starting out. Mm-hmm. You know, he's like, what is who's the guy? Morgan Freeman. 
as he oh yeah yeah like, yeah he didn't start till he was like like in his 40s yeah or something i just feel yeah. like it's like there's just so much emphasis placed on age and mm-hmm. like like you're too old or you're too young or like all this stuff and it's like if you have this like drive to do something just do it yeah absolutely and if you have a fukami backing you up then no, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. Mean, like not everybody has that unfortunately but right um but yeah i don't know i'm just like if you want to do something just do it i get that like, i i get i get that it's inspirational in that regard mm-hmm. definitely I but, think... it, but it could be anti-inspirational too because mm-hmm. fukami was the same way yeah i mean he yeah. was just doing what he wanted to do and yeah. it ended up making him lose his theater right so... because there wasn't basically there wasn't a market so for it's it like you you have to like find this balance of mm-hmm. like what you want to do obviously and pursuing it but also like living in the reality that we do live in right I mean, right the, it, it, it's about radical acceptance mm-hmm. yeah 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 i think that that actually that sort of relates to my other gripe with the movie um is that you just hated it, didn't you? It was awful. Yeah, I thought um, so. No, I, that was why you left midway through yeah, and didn't come back. I didn't until watch the very end. this movie. Okay. if I'm being honest, uh, um, I was wondering where you gone. <laughs> yeah, I just left. Yeah, I, I just went to uh, McDonald's. Okay, I didn't get anything. I just wanted to use the free you just Wi-Fi. Wanted to sit in McDonald's and yeah. use the free Wi-Fi. Yeah, did you do some internet surfing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, to 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 read all the negative reviews about this movie <laughs> so that. Um, I would have, you know, that confirmation bias and it would make me feel better about Echo my chamber. opinions. Echo yeah. chamber at McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah. That's my, that's my band. <laughs> um, so, but no, I, generally I like this movie. I think it was kind of underwhelming, but my two, I did have two like really big gripes with it. One was the lack of like Kiyoshi having much of a story or character. Mm-hmm. And the other thing though was how you were saying it's kind of like a standard like biopic. Mm-hmm. Like, Again, if you're still listening and you're trying to avoid spoilers, stop. But, uh, like, we all knew in the first ten minutes that that he was going to die. That his mentor was going to die. Okay. Like, it was that... like, they set that up so, See, like... And, okay, like, that's that's the thing, is, mm-hmm. like... Is this where you differ from other people? Did other people not see that coming? Is that... No, no, no. I have oh, no okay. idea. I have no idea what other okay. people think. I think, like, it, it, the unfortunate part about movies, which... it. it so this is this is fascinating. Mm-hmm. This movie is a great springboard for what we're going to be talking about next week, which Ooh. I am so excited. I am so excited to be talking about the one next week. So stay tuned for the mm-hmm. one next week. But this movie, yeah, uh, it uh, it's very like pun not intended. It's very beat for beat. Yeah, it's very like this is these are the rules of story making. These are the rules of story writing. These are the rules of movie making. These are the rules of movie writing. Like, yep. and they just very very clearly very succinctly just fall into place right. and so like yes absolutely the the moment his mentor was on the screen i was, I was like, like oh, oh yeah he's gonna die yeah like, i didn't think he'd die the way he did no but, but i mean it's just like uh, and obviously like it's based on a true story and everything but mm-hmm. it's it's the way that he was presented yeah it's... they like obviously like if part of the story is that he died then he has to die in the story if you're if you're yeah, saying true to reality, of course. But it's like the way that it was presented, it was just immediately like, oh yeah, okay, he's gonna he's die. He's gonna die. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's unfortunate that that's why you know people talk about cliche mm-hmm. and uh, tropiness mm-hmm. in writing. Um, not, not that we never we not that we necessarily really go into that on this show, um, but definitely you have an example of somebody in the mentor archetype role exactly. Very, very like obviously forecasted from the get go, mm-hmm. and it, you know it, it. He he followed the script, right. you know. No, that's that's and and it's hard. I feel disingenuous talking about this because it is a real person's life. Of course, that's that's why I, I feel kind of weird. About it, it feels too. disingenuous to talk about it in that sense. However, I am talking about this from the movie. I'm uh, yeah. talking about his character in the movie. Yeah, I'm not talking about. I'm not him talking about him at all. So I want to make that clear. Um, I, I'm I'm saying I think the movie potentially like did a disservice to him by making him trophy. Yeah, you, you know I, what I mean. I can see that. Yeah, and like I still I really enjoyed his character. Oh, absolutely. He absolutely. was probably my favorite part, mm-hmm. uh, other than what people were like talking about in yes, the reviews. What, they, what were people saying? They tell me absolutely loved. Oh, what was his name? Let me look him up. Um, uh, Yagira. Mm-hmm. Uh. Did I say that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. Who, who's that? The guy, the, who, the guy played who played Katana, Katano. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. It was so funny. Like, <laughs> I know that there are some, like, hard Katano stands out there. Like, oh, yeah. Like, big old Katano, like... And, like, there were people in the <laughs> reviews, like... I mean, like, you do you, bro. It's all good. Like, but who were, like, getting angry that he didn't look like Katano. Uh, oh, okay. Like, he didn't look like young Katano because there's obviously... Uh, pictures. Picture, and, and he was on video. TV. Yeah, so, yeah, like, course, obviously we know what he looked like. And people were, like... <sighs> griping about that fact and how they almost didn't watch the movie because he didn't look like him so hold on i'm not done but then when they but then when they watched the movie they were like oh but his performance was just amazing and he got his mannerisms perfectly and it was just like like okay but like can we can we roll back to like he doesn't look the part like that's some like that's some black people can't cosplay white characters bullshit. Yeah. And I am not about that. So, like that is not cool. Well no, that that's what I was gonna say. I, I was gonna say, so were the people who were writing these reviews the hiring directors for the Disney theme parks? <laughs> Where it's like, no, you're an inch too tall to oh be my Belle. Gosh. You cannot Oh my god. The, the three year old in the stroller will know that you are not actually Belle. That, that <laughs> like, you're not actually 5'8 or yeah. whatever you have to so, be. Actually, no, I think most of them are a lot shorter. No, I, I think most of them are like 5'4. Right. Th- but no, that's that's some bullshit. That's some like. I know. Like, I mean, okay, this is anecdotal, obviously. Sure, sure. Um, but I'm just like, you know, maybe if like you're one of those people, mm-hmm. maybe just like. Reel it in a little bit. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Just think about the humanity of that statement. (laughs) Because, like, okay, another perfect example, in my opinion, is... um, I don't even know if you remember, because this was, like, years ago. We watched this when it came out. But um, that movie, the Oliver Stone movie, Snowden, where it was Joseph Gordon-Levitt playing Edward Snowden. I remember He looks nothing like Edward Snowden. No. (laughs) Like, he... No, I will say, in my mind, Joseph (laughs) Gordon-Levitt is Edward Snowden. Okay. And he always will be. But, but that's, that's (laughs) the very hot Edward Snowden. (laughs) No, but that's, that's what I'm saying, though, is that because he got his voice so right. Yes. And because he got his mannerisms so right. It's like, no, he embodied that the character of like is he literally at no, no of course not he does not look like him no but like he still he did his job well mm-hmm. of becoming yeah. the character of snowden yeah so, exactly like, no that's that's some that's some bullshit like well I, it's funny okay i unfortunately i do not remember the youtuber who did this okay um but I found there's a YouTuber. This is like totally off topic, but I just think it's funny. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> there's a YouTuber called Clint's Reptiles. Yeah. And he talks about all different kinds of reptiles and like, uh-huh. is this reptile like a good pet for you, basically? And he he's very like, you know how some people, they, they like, how do I put this? He's just him. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like he's just, like the way he talks. He's like eccentric and, he, and quirky. Like eccentric and quirky. quirky. Like I hate that word, but <laughs> I like do too. I mean, like yes, yes. But basically, he's just so him. Yeah. Like he's not like other people. Uh, sure. You know, and and that's not to say anything about the morality of that or anything like that. No, like we're right. just gonna say he is him. Yeah. And I saw somebody who was like a, a younger you know YouTuber, like aspiring to mm-hmm. be a much much smaller channel, who mm-hmm. did some similar like talks about reptiles mm-hmm. and stuff. Mm-hmm. And they like put on a fake beard, you know, and like used a green screen uh-huh. and got his background and like, <laughs> and they. It was like, it felt like I was watching yeah, Clint yeah, yeah. because it was like, holy smokes. And I wish I could remember who it was. You know how like when you like or, just yeah. go into YouTube, you know, black holes and yeah. you don't know who oh. it was. I wish I could. Um, unfortunately, I can't. But it's like that. Mm-hmm. This person who looks nothing like Clint, yeah. you know, played the role and it was like, holy smokes. Yeah. Like you're doing it, yeah. you know, but I never thought you can't do that. Because you don't look because like Because you him. don't look like him. No, like, that's... I don't like that. I don't like that. Anyway, we can stop that rant now. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. I, I totally get it. I think people getting hung up on, like, the aesthetics of people is really weird. That's some... Yeah, that's and, some weird. Like, okay, I'm not, like, this is a judgment-free zone. I'm not going to judge you for for thinking that way. I would just... I would question why that is so important. Yeah, I mean, You know it's, what I mean? Yeah, it's... It's valid, you know, yeah. like you're allowed to think how yeah. what you want, you know, 
Um, but you are always responsible for the actions that you take based on yeah. your thinking. Don't, but... don't, don't, don't be an asshole. Don't, just in general. Just don't be a meanie butthead. Yeah. Um, I have some trivia if you had anything else you want to I don't say. have anything else, okay. so if you want to, yeah. So, uh, Asak- uh, I'm going to say it like a proper English gentleman. Okay. Um, Asakusa. Asakusa. Uh, Asakusa. <laughs> and I think uh, that's how the English would say it, though. Like, Asakusa. I don't even know. <laughs> no. It's like, it's like a... They always do like a soft like, A in Japanese. No, but it's, it's, it's about, it, it's about, um... So, like, I mean, uh, tanuki is a great example. Right, right. In Japan, you say tanuki, but right. I, I mean, we've probably said this before, but it, people here say tanuki. Tanuki, you, yeah. They, uh, American, it's the stress. Uh, English-speaking Americans put it on mm-hmm. the second syllable, mm-hmm. and in Japan, a lot of times, it's on the first syllable. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's hard, and, like, even when you're learning Japanese, like, that's so, like, innate mm-hmm. as an English, as an English speaker, speaker yeah. that... Well, and everybody will lie to you and tell you that Japanese doesn't have tone, too. That doesn't help. So. Oh, yeah. That's a, everybody, that's a bunch of bullshit. Everybody will tell you Japanese is a flat language and it does not have tone. Like anybody, Chinese, Vietnamese. Anybody who says that can go eat some farts. It does not have tone in the same way that those other languages do, but it definitely it has tone. It absolutely has tone. It has pitch, and if you like, if you are if you if you are like going into Japanese language learning, uh-huh. And you have a teacher tell you, no, there's no tone. Run away. Yeah. Because that will fundamentally screw up your language learning for the first years. Yeah. Until you get to that part where it's like, oh, by the way, now we're going to start talking about this. About pitch accent. D- just Google Google just, pitch accent if you're learning Japanese. Because mm. that, that's a thing you probably won't learn for the first couple of years. And you need to learn it. It is yeah. so vital to saying things correctly. Yeah. Anyway. Were we talking we're, about a movie? <laughs> we're getting off that soapbox. No, okay, anyway, here's anyway. some trivia. Okay. Um, the Franzza, mm-hmm. Puranzza, mm-hmm. Um, it's still around. Oh, that's cool. They have daily comedy performances and storytelling. Uh, technically, the storytelling is in, it's, it's a building within that building, but it's a different like mm-hmm. part of the building. It's the bathroom. Um, it's the bathroom. Okay. Go in, you go into the bathroom and it's like, uh, well, what's his name? Uh, the toilet son, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Hanako or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, Hanako. Uh, and, uh, and you go into the bathroom and you sit on the toilet and yeah. um, somebody in the stall next to you right. just starts telling you a story. I mean, that's what people did before they had smartphones, right? I, th- that's what How I did. did you not get bored on the toilet if somebody wasn't telling you a story? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Can you imagine if you went into a bathroom? And somebody and just started somebody talking? Just started... Actually, that has happened to me before. Somebody thought that I was somebody else. Oh, no. And I was oh, like... Oh, I hate that. Uh, I think you had the wrong person. Yeah. You know, mid-P. Right. You know, that that's not, that's, that's not the place to be. No. <clears throat> okay. It is now called uh, Toyokan. Mm-hmm. It's been called that since 2000. Okay. But the name Franza is supposedly still on the billboard. That's cool. Um, apparently, it was named Franzza because whoever named it, I don't remember. It is written in the stuff, but I don't remember who it was. Uh, they just loved France. <laughs> oh. That's I, I mean, literally that's, it. That's like, fair. I mean, um, it originally, I think it was originally built in like 1951. Mm-hmm. I didn't write that down. No, it's fine. I can't it's put, fine. But it's something like that. Citation, um, just trust me, bro. Yeah. Um, uh, originally, it did not have an elevator. Oh. But it got completely reconstructed in 1959 mm-hmm. when it did get an elevator. And if it didn't have an elevator, he might not have had a job there. Yeah. And that elevator's still there. Oh, you that's cool. You can actually ride the elevator. Yeah. Yeah. That's... And apparently it's like a huge thing after this movie came out. Riding like people, the elevator. People go to ride the elevator. So, do you know if this was actually filmed there? I, I couldn't find yeah. find that. I, I, I mean, wonder, I'm sure there's you know. probably resources in Japanese. And I will also say, my computer was running like dog shit. <laughs> so I kind of got fed up. You better catch it. <laughs> like, I'm not going to go run. A, a, I'm not going to run to catch dog shit. It, it can I'm continue just, running as much as it wants without me. I mean, I'm just saying, it's <laughs> running. You might be, yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know if that means... so Because like the movie talks about how he started a college and then he dropped out. And mm-hmm. I... And like... His, based on his age, like, I don't know if that means, like, he started immediately and it took, like, 10 years for him to get into, uh, right, f- uh, Fukumi or f- Fukuma, I can't remember, no, Fukami. it's Fukami, yeah. into his good graces, right. or, like, if he started later, I, I couldn't figure that out either. Okay, yeah. Um, but, I mean, I, I think it's cool that that building's still there. I, that I, that's cool. one thing about Japan that I love that, like, we don't really have here in America. Nope. 
like just that like appreciation for historical mm-hmm. you know things you yeah. know and also just like recycling you yeah. know <laughs> like instead of being like oh just tear it down and build something new yeah like i i see both sides to that obviously there are pros and cons to each yeah. of course you know but just realizing that a lot of other countries have buildings that are even just 50 years old is like wild yeah what's that like our viewers and yeah. listeners from um places that are not the united states yeah do you have a hundred or 200 plus year old building near you comment below because that's kind of awesome that's, i don't know what that's like that's really cool i mean admittedly like there's a few but we have buildings like that but yeah, nothing but like thousands of years go old. go no, nothing that has been appropriately preserved yeah for like obviously those those things exist uh-huh. obviously well yeah but unfortunately mm-hmm. we don't have much record or access to them yeah if any yeah so that's fair. yeah so so let's put that caveat on there that it needs to always be said yeah 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 do you have any other that's all the trivia, trivia? i had all right um i don't i don't think i have anything else i did not expect this episode to be this long so whoever stayed to oh, listen wow. for the whole yeah. thing uh thanks. thanks i thought this was gonna be like 10 minutes put a put, put a, a sunshine emote yeah. for the um huge heat stroke that we are currently facing yep. uh bathing suit up uh you know it's the middle of september it, labor days passed so the pools are closed but we're still in our bathing suits baby <laughs> And um, let us know what you think. Let us know what you thought about this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, tell us how wrong we are, because you always do. And you know, I will. I will give people credit. They have not done that much recently. Not and recently. I appreciate you letting me believe that I'm correct about things <laughs> and not telling me how wrong I am. Uh, I mean, no. <laughs> I'll tell you how wrong you are. I know, and that's why I love you. You keep me in check. Yeah. Oh, I totally just punched your arm. Were you? Yeah. You, you just you just soiled everything. Yeah, I did. Oh. Um, anyway. Tune in next week. We have something very different than yep. what we covered today. And little sneak peek, uh, if you're like the guy who named Francois uh, and you like France, you're you're in for a treat next week. Wait, really? Even Kylie doesn't know what I'm talking about. That's what I love about this show, about doing research separately. And then, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, if you're on YouTube, uh, we are also on Spotify. If you don't want to see the little bloop, 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 thing on screen <laughs> oh i hate the blue 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 thing um and uh, that's that's me being the person in the comments who's oh. you know a meanie butthead yeah i love the little blue blue, blue I, thing. I do too i it's think it's so, so cool <laughs> and if you're on spotify we also have a youtube channel where we have a ton of i just like four or five years worth of videos um that are not on this spotify podcast channel machine so if you want to check that out go check it out thanks for watching Bye.